Why do I have a ribbon tied to the end of my broom handle sitting right here with what looks suspiciously like a little bit of human hair? <laughs> well, today I am going to try my hand at spinning the flax that we processed in the last video into linen fiber that I can then use to weave something. I have never spun anything before in my life. I have used my spinning wheels to do some plying, so I feel like I have a bit of a leg up, but other than that I've really never tried spinning on a spinning wheel before. And notice that I said on a spinning wheel because I do have a drop spindle. And I got this drop spindle I think over 10 years ago and I tried to make my first yarn and this, I was gonna say catastrophe, but I feel like I should be nicer about it, is what came of that. But I had an idea. I've been using a treadle sewing machine for a few years now, so I'm very used to using my foot to control the spinning of a particular wheel at a particular speed and stopping and starting it at very specific points. So I thought that if I got a spinning wheel, my hands could focus just on the drafting motion. So today for Craftmas Day 2, we are going to try to learn how to spin flax to linen on my spinning wheel. started spitting, I first wanted to process the flax that I had grown in my own beds. I had two handfuls, one from the lower bed and one from the upper bed. I put that through the flax break and the sketching process, but there were some complications I think as you can see. So after all of that, this is the amount of line fiber that I could get from my plants that I grew myself. Probably a few factors that led to this being the only bit that's usable. The flax plants themselves were struggling, obviously. They were supposed to be harvested in like 90 to 100 days. I think mine was five months or something. Secondly, I think these are over -redded. The wild flax was under and so I went a little bit harder with my homegrown flax, not taking into account that they've been hanging outside since May and it's been on and off raining. So it's basically been like slowly do redding for months already. So it was really unnecessary maybe even to ret my flax in the first place. It's a learning process. I could probably salvage a little bit more from the piles that I have laying around and I'll probably spend a little bit of time doing that, but I would rather move on to learning how to spin flax. I'm gonna go ahead and take out my spinning wheel and <laughs> let's see if we can learn how to spin together. I thought it was just really interesting very quickly for me to point out the difference between the two flaxes I processed. So this is the wild flax and this is the flax that I grew at home and it is just so much lighter and the wild flax definitely still has that tinge of green to it which I just thought was absolutely fascinating. I wish that I could cross these two plants together and get the sturdiness and hardiness of the stems of this plant and the tallness and height and non-branching of this one. <laughs> I don't know, we'll see, maybe sometime in future. Okay anyway, Back to the spinning. Do I still have my pumpkins up from Halloween? Yeah, it is an absolute mess, but I need to be able to use my spinning wheel when I'm sitting here. So let me just tidy that up real quick and grab my spinning wheel out so that we can work on this together. I think I'm just gonna go for it. Let's try drafting out our first fiber. Whoops. <laughs> okay, come take a look at what I'm doing because it's absolute garbage. <laughs> In case you're wondering, I watched Jillian Eve's channel on how to spin on a spinning wheel. I used that as basically my introductory course into spinning and I started with wool rather than flax just because I heard that flax is quite a bit harder to do than wool. So try number one at spinning on a spinning wheel is very art yarn-esque. I don't hate it, it is just so uneven. <laughs> 
And I'm really trying to go for an even consistent spin. Let me go rewatch Evie's video and see if I can practice a little bit more. Cause this is, this is not my best work. Here is my second bit of yarn. Uh, again, very artistic. I actually think it's maybe worse than my first. Here's the first, here's the second. One thing I'm noticing is that I think the fiber has a very long staple length. So I'm having to hold my hands really far apart. For some reason that feels difficult to me. I have other raw fibers. So I'm gonna see if maybe I can find some that has a shorter staple length. Maybe that'll help me. I'll try that. So this is my second night of spinning. Just as an idea of how long it's taken for me to get a little bit more of a feel for it. Uh, and it, fe it feels, it's still not fully relaxing, but it's less of a struggle. I watch gaming streams, <laughs> which is how I gauge my time. And I watched a two and a half hour gaming stream yesterday and that entire time I was spinning. And I am, I just watched a knitting video that was 30 minutes long. So I've been in doing 30 minutes for this evening and I have two thoughts. Firstly, I am feeling like I know my spinning wheel so much better now. Yesterday when I was having to stop, like I was having to park and draft, couldn't get the timing right or the feel right for stopping my wheel at the point where it was just past the upper point so that without having to touch my wheel again, I could just press my foot down and it would continue spinning in the right direction. If you don't stop it at the right point, it will turn back the other way and start undoing all the spinning you just did. So today it feels really intuitive, like I'm not thinking about it, and I just managed to be stopping the wheel at the correct point. And that is that is really satisfying because it means that I can just sit here, stop, do what I need to be doing, and continue pedaling right in this position. Whereas yesterday you might have seen me do a lot of fiddling and then going like this and then fiddling and then going like this. The second thing is, is when I'm working with my roving, you can kind of see it has two ears. So I've been drawing and drafting from this part, like I started drafting from the entire thing. And as I'm working down this roving, I'm drafting out one ear and kind of like, it, I just, it splits. And like, it, it's working okay, but I wonder if there's a different thing that I can do with this. Like, can I take it apart and fold it in half and draft from that and it'll be so much easier. So I'm gonna see if I can find a video that might explain that a little bit better. I usually use Jillian Eve's videos for learning everything spinning related because they are absolutely wonderful. She describes it in detail and she also does so many cool projects but I got a video recommended underneath one of her tutorials that I was watching by Grace Shalom Hopkins and she goes into exactly the problem I'm having. I can either continue what I'm doing where I'm spinning a, what she calls across the grain but she also says that she doesn't prefer to do that and she'll just split it along the natural fault lines in the roving and that makes it so much easier. Let's get back to some more spinning practice.
morning, like I promised. So let's do some flax spinning today. Before we dive right into it though, I did want to talk like a little bit about the history of flax. What, why is flax so interesting to me? And the reason is because it is historically significant in terms of yarn production. It is thought to be the first fiber that people used to weave things. One of my patrons on Patreon recommended the book 20,000 Years of Women's Work, which was absolutely fantastic. I realized that it was kind of the narrative version of someone's thesis. So I bought her thesis by EJW Barber. It goes into so much more of the detail of the history, like prehistoric textiles specifically. But one of the things that I thought was really interesting, like right before we jump into the spinning is in Egypt, they used to splice the fibers rather than spin them. So the drafting method of spinning originated, we believe, from places with wool because the staples were so short versus flax, the staples are quite a bit longer and maybe it was viewed as pieces of string that they just needed to join together or splice together end to end. So anyway, I thought that was fascinating. If you're interested in that, 20,000 years of women's work and then the thesis that that book was based on, flax is deeply rooted in textile and human history. And I think it'd be a really cool skill to learn how to spin it and make it into a textile. Enough chatter, let's spin up all of this flax. Step one though is you need a distaff. As I'm a very new spinner, you want a third arm helping you out. The distaff acts as that third arm. I don't own a distaff, but I did find instructions online how to use cardboard, paper, and newspaper to make a cone distaff. Let's build a distaff real quick. My distaff is done. It's it's lopsided. It's okay. It also said that you need a dowel in order to have something to put this over. Well, I didn't have one, so this is my broom. <laughs> I found a few videos on how to dress a flax distaff with flax. Let's take a crack at it. I think this method's gonna work. This line fiber is really just not long enough. I saw a video where they dressed a stick distaff, so we are just gonna use the top of my broom handle to dress it like they did in that video. One of the bigger differences to the wool that I was practicing on is I was Z twisting my wool. It doesn't really matter which way you spin wool because it doesn't have any natural twist versus flax has natural twist in the S direction. So it is a stronger fiber if you also spin it in the S direction. The other thing is you're also supposed to spin flax with wet hands. They say that the spit is the best. I'm gonna try that first. and see how that goes. Oh, and I already broke it off. Okay, man, I do not know what I'm doing at all. I keep breaking it immediately. <laughs> This part's frustrating. I keep on breaking off from my, where I'm drafting from. Oh 
boy, that's not easy. I wonder if the issue is with the way that I've dressed my distaff or the way that my spinning technique is going. And the more that I sit here and I look at this, I can learn how to spin line flax like this, but the main purpose right now is for me to spin the flax that I processed. Here are the two grades of line flax that I was able to get from my wild and homegrown. It's double the length of what I have on here, but it's definitely not enough, I don't think, to dress a distaff. So I'm wondering if I can use like a rolag spinning technique instead. Oh, let me go look up some more videos because right now I feel like there's, there's too many variables and I don't understand what is the problem. Like I can't isolate the issue very well. So I think I need to go for an easier drafting technique if I can. I made myself a rolag, which just looks like a very hairy, beefy caterpillar. <laughs> Let's see if this changes anything or improves anything. They say flax isn't supposed to be as twisted, so I'm trying not to twist it as much, but like I said, maybe it's this commercial preparation, maybe it's that it's way too dry and I'm not making it wet enough. I'm just gonna spin it so it sticks together and then we can refine the technique from there. <laughs> One of the things that I feel like I could potentially hear some of you asking or questioning on your mind is why jump this far ahead? Like why do something this far advanced and in what may be a bit of a rushed manner? Flax spinning is a bit of a more advanced technique. Spinning in general is an entire craft to learn. Why am I not taking the time to learn this in maybe a more comfortable manner or more properly. It's down to what you prioritize. I have perfectionistic tendencies and my perfectionism a lot of times gets in the way of doing things. It keeps me from starting things or doing things or completing things that I've always wanted to do and I have a passion about because I worry that it won't be good enough. And so forcing myself to just dive into it head first, it's not going to be perfect, but I'll have started. The excitement of starting something that I've always wanted to do balances out maybe the slight frustration that I still have that something isn't going exactly as I envisioned. That's kind of my logic for this. I know it's gonna be far from great, but I am just excited to see progress happening more than anything. So now that I have been practicing spinning my flax for a while, I think it's time for us to get the flax that I've processed ready to spin. I think the biggest thing that I realize is that I prefer spinning from Rolags, so I want to prepare our flax into Rolex. And also, yes, these are dog brushes. <laughs> they are more available and less expensive than carding brushes. Let's prepare these Rolex. of my own my own processed flax here we have the wild flax you can maybe see it's a little darker and greener and here's the flax that i grew so let's take this over to the spinning wheel and see what we can do So my homegrown and processed and the wild flax yarn that I made, I plied it and right now it is boiling. 
in a pot of water. As far as I know, to remove a little bit more of the, I think it's the pectin is the glue, but I'm still spinning as much of this flax into linen as I can because I want to make something, like I want to weave something. I'm sitting here spinning some of the commercial linen that I have, and it just makes me think of a word in German that I heard growing up, which is Spinnstube. And the context I heard it in was always, especially in the dark winter months, when people would meet a lot of times in the informal living room. And the Spinnstube, when we would say that, it kind of meant to be cozy, and to have Gemütlichkeit, Geheimlichkeit, and Gesellschaft. So like to come together as a group of people and to be cozy, to do things together, to have a good chat. Sometimes a lot of good gossip was implied as a part of it as well. And spend the long dark evenings together. So I'm just thinking of that when I sit here and I spin on a winter evening. I kind of love it. And I was looking it up very briefly. A lot of it had to do in the history with unmarried women that would spin their flax into linen for their wedding trousseaus. That makes me feel even more connected that I'm currently spinning my own flax into linen. finished up spinning some of the rest of this commercial flax into linen. I balled it up into a ball and then plied it. And I think you can see in the comparison of the commercial flax and my homegrown flax that it is definitely a lot more rough, my homegrown and homespun versus the commercial one. So I think there's a room for improvement in the future, but it is also really, really cool to see that I have now officially grown and spun my own yarn. From here, I think the next steps are going to be dyeing some of this with my homegrown dye, so I'm very excited for you all to see that next time. If you want to keep watching this series, please feel free to subscribe. Thank you so much for watching, and I will see you for Craftmas Day 3 very, very soon. Bye!